Good morning and happy Easter. Please stand and join us singing number 178, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 178. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of Jesus, the risen Lord, be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, from the Ukraine to Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip, and the poor people who lost their lives in Nashville, and all of us here today, the message is Jesus Christ is risen. He is truly risen. And that's why you're here, I hope. It's nice to be with the family. It's nice to be all together. But in the end, it's him. It's him. And we come to worship this gift of the risen Christ among us. So let us call first on God's mercy, that he open our ears, and just let us really enter into the feast. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are our Passover and our lasting peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship
let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought about by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. We ask it through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So please be seated, everyone, as we listen to the Easter message to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testified that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say God's mercy.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Christians praise the Paschal Victim, offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep, Christ the Just One paid the price, reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life fought bitterly for this wondrous victory. The Lord of life who died reigns glorified. O Mary, come and say what you saw at break of day. The empty tomb of my living Lord. I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testified, shroud and grave close side by side. Yes, Christ my hope rose gloriously. He goes before you into Galilee. Share the good news, sing joyfully. His death is victory. Lord Jesus, Victor King, show us mercy. Hallelujah, 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 El Señor Jesus told, hallelujah, 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 El Señor Jesus told, praise, praise God in the temple, in the highest heaven, praise, praise God's mighty be with you. And with spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb 
and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the greatest event that ever happened since the creation of the universe. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the greatest event that ever happened since the creation of the universe. And yet, God never forces us to believe in it. He never sticks our nose in it. He never says, this is it, twist your arm, you've got to take this. He leaves us free. The Gospels, even like today, we just heard, assure us that, that just like Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, if you want to go back 33 years, just like that, the resurrection today, the resurrection was physical. It was real. It was not just a mind trip inside the disciples. It was something physical. The tomb was empty. The people could touch him. He ate food with them. He was not a ghost. It was physical. But Jesus rising from the dead was not something non-negotiable that got forced onto you didn't make a big splash in Rome <laughs> the day it happened. They had no idea, 2,000 miles away. It's not like the news today. It happened, at first it was quiet. It wasn't spectacular. The resurrection has the same dynamics as, as the birth in Bethlehem. After Jesus rose from the dead, he was seen by some and not by others. He was understood by some and not by others. Some got its meaning and it changed their lives and others were <sighs> indifferent, nice. And others became absolutely hostile and ready to destroy him and anybody who believed in him. Some got the meaning and it changed their lives. Others were indifferent. And see, it's, it's really like a parallel to back to Bethlehem, to Jesus' birth, because the baby was real, not a ghost. But it was, he was seen by some, the shepherds, the magi, not by others, understood by some, the old man Simeon and Anna, not by others. Some got the meaning, it changed their lives. Others, like Herod, we're ready to destroy it. Why the difference? What makes some people cherish the baby and others not? What makes some people see the resurrection and others not? What lets some understand the mystery and embrace it while others remain indifferent or are ready to destroy it. Perhaps, perhaps one answer is this, that love is the eye. Love is the eye. When we look at anything through the eyes of love, we see correctly, we understand. We make the mystery of it our own. And the reverse is, is also true. If we look at anything or anyone 
through the eyes that are jaded, cynical, eyes that are jealous or bitter, we will not see correctly. We will not understand the person and we will not make their mystery our own because love is the eye. And so we see this now this morning in this wonderful gospel we just read of John. Jesus is risen, but first of all, first of all, the only person who gets up to do something in this gospel is Mary Magdalene because she loves him. And she couldn't just sit back while everybody else was in the room crying. She got her spices and she came. She wasn't sure what she was going to find. At least she, could, at least she could anoint the body. But she did it because of love. Then Peter and John come running. <laughs> and the thing is that when they get to the tomb, the disciple whom Jesus loved, he outran Peter. He gets there, but he doesn't go in first. He lets Peter go first. He's older. He's got authority. And Peter goes in sees the linens, but Peter does not understand yet. He doesn't. The beloved disciple, love, <laughs> love sees. John got the message, and Peter did after. Love sees, love understands, love grasps the mystery Love is the eye. And it's what lets us understand and care about the resurrection. In our first reading today, Peter testifies, we are witnesses of all that Jesus did. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, but not to all. Not to all, but to us. Chosen before. We, we here today, we, dear hearts, are chosen and blessed to see and to believe in the Lord Jesus. He changed our lives, or we wouldn't be here. He changed our lives and allowed us to look with the eyes of love and make his mystery our own. And that that makes all the events of Holy Week that we just lived through, it makes it alive in our hearts and in our actions. And it makes us alive in the risen Jesus. And it lets us live and breathe by the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. We got the same spirit. And yet others, many, Many, it's gone bigger and bigger every year now, unfortunately. Many others are indifferent to all of this. People all around us. <laughs> There's some very powerful people, some of our family, some of our friends, neighbors. Really, they couldn't care less. They're indifferent. And some around us truly oppose this. And with all their cunning and deceit, they're ready to try to destroy it, and us, and the gospel. But for us, we're blessed. Our gift, our challenge, is to see the whole world, to see our whole lives in a new way. It allows the good news and our witness to the good news to outshine and to overcome all the other sadness, the evil, the death that currently surrounds us. Even as we await, as, as St. Paul says, to share in the glorious freedom of the children of God, we await. A few weeks ago, um, I was very moved to hear from one of my nieces about a, a lifelong friend of hers who had given birth to a son who suffered from some rare neurological 
muscular disease, and who basically cannot move a muscle. His mind is very sharp. And now he's grown to be about 11 years old. And he can go to special school every day with the aid of a nurse, a full-time nurse or an aide to be with him. But his mother, a friend of my niece's, his mother remained just wise and loving and strong over all these years with that. Love is the eye. And she saw and she still sees. But the added grace, at least for me, was my niece goes on with the story that about a year ago, this mother discovered that she can bake wedding cakes. And she learned how to do that incredible decoration of creating roses and flowers and garlands and layer upon layer. And in her own kitchen, while the, the boy is at school and everything else, she's making wedding cakes to capture the joy and the hope of newly married couples on the first day of their lives together. She's a witness, this woman. She's a witness to the unquenchable hope in the midst of suffering. And her faithfulness is helping to create more faithfulness. She got it. Last week, some of the residents over at Brandywine, it's a, a, a rest house over there in, in town here. They asked me to come to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation before Easter. And most of the folks who came were in their late 80s and their 90s. But again, and some were a little confused, but so am I. But basically, 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 what struck me was their faith in Jesus, whom they had trusted, whom they saw with the eyes of love, a Jesus who for 10 decades, 10 decades of their lives was the rock of their past, of their present, and of their future. 10 decades. What lets some people see and understand the mystery, the power of the resurrection, and embrace it, while others remain indifferent or hostile? Love is the eye. If we see with the eyes of love, we too will meet the risen Jesus. And we will help to build up the new creation and build it with hearts of love. You know that uh, all during, we could stand, yes. I was going to give you a few more minutes to sit, but now you can stand. <laughs> you know that all during Lent, those who were about to be baptized all over the world were preparing and preparing. And then last night, they were born again. Born again to live forever. And it's our custom that all of us who were baptized maybe 10 decades ago have a chance to renew those vows in our faith. And so, dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you all, each one individually and all of us together, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. And do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin 
may have no mastery over you. I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, May he keep us by his grace for eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, no one's going to be dipped into the water, but we're going to pass among you and sprinkle the Easter water on you as we sing a song. Water of life, Jesus our life, journey from death to new life. Water of life, Jesus our life, journey from death. Oh. 
seated you've been standing a long time because what we want to do now is to pray and that's what we do as the baptized we pray for the whole world for one another in the spirit so let us pray then for the church that we may radiate the light of Christ each day and confidently live as the daughters and sons of God we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized around the world and those joined in full communion to the church, that they may faithfully follow Jesus and keep the light of Christ burning in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all children, those here, those around the world, that they may live and grow in peace, celebrating God's love each day of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in need, that the risen Lord will encounter and bring hope, healing, and strength to the poor and the sick, to refugees, to those trafficked, to runaway children, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for peace throughout the world, that the risen Lord will guide the human family away from violence, particularly in the Ukraine and the Holy Lands, and lead them toward new efforts for cooperation and development. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And let us pray for all those who are grieving from the storms, the tornadoes, the cyclones in this country and around the world, that God will give them peace and hope when they hear the good news of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for inspiration that the Holy Spirit will give insight and courage to legislators and government leaders as they try to develop policies to address violence and safety in schools. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all those who are sick, you yourself, if you're not well, especially those who care for the sick each day. We remember in a special way Lynn and Julia, Paul, Tom Hudkins, that the power of the risen Christ will reach every frailty and worry with his healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And as we think of resurrection, we pray for our dearly departed. We remember in a special way Tim and Leah Moynihan, Melissa, Ruth Diorio, 
and the Mass is offered for Debbie Forese, that all who have died, whose lives are hidden with Christ in God, may live forever with Christ in the glory of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for Joe Vitone on his 70th birthday, and also for Father Don on the 40th anniversary of his ordination to priesthood. It's today, right? Yes. And then in silence, for all the people, all the things that are closest to your hearts, we pray to the Lord. This is the day, O oh God, which you have made, raising Christ from the dead and raising us with Christ. You have fashioned for yourself a new people, washed in the flood of baptism, sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, invited to the banquet of the Lamb. In the beauty of this Easter morning, set our minds on the new life to which you have called us. Place on our lips the words of witness for which you anointed us and seal our hearts to celebrate the festival with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, I think, yes, at the beginning of each section, there are some wicker baskets and outside to... Uh, that we use for a collection. And so if you could pass them around and back, the ushers would help. Your generosity really helps to keep the shrine alive. So we thank you for that. Let us pray then, brothers, sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Amen. With exultant paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Yes. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. us proclaim in song the mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. And look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, that we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, and especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant. Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, with the order of bishops and the clergy, and with the entire people you have gained for your own. And Father, listen graciously to this family, whom you have gathered here before you. And in your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. This is the prayer of all the daughters and sons of God. And so with great joy, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us share some sign of that peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, pray. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life.
for the reception of, of Holy Communion. We're going to come section by section over here. And then, so just wait for the priest to come and then come down. Just take your time, okay? And then we'll go outside too for everybody who's outside. Our first communion song is number 142, Glory in the Cross, number 142, and we'll be singing the Easter verses. Second communion song is number 329, I am the bread of life, number 329.
We're not quite done yet. Um, one of the things we'd like to do is, um, is just to sing the Regina Chaley that praises the mother of God whose son rose from the dead. We're going to sing it in Latin. If you'd like to follow, it's number 187. 187. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Quia, quem eruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicutixit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. So on behalf of the Montford missionaries, Father Bill, myself, Father Jim, all of our volunteers here at the Shrine, we want to wish you a happy and blessed Easter. Um, Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter to all of you out in the sinner section. <laughs> it's Easter, so your sins are forgiven. <laughs> um, so Lent was 40 days. Easter is for 50 days. So we have to rejoice. We have to celebrate for 50 days. So we hope that these 50 days are a joy for you as we continue to celebrate Easter and move into spring. Oh, and if you're doing the math, I was 10 years old when I was ordained. <laughs> not, not true. We prayed, we prayed for a Joe Vitone on his 70th birthday. You come back next month and somebody here is going to say Let us pray. <laughs> Oh God, look upon your church with unfailing love so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended, go in peace, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our recessional song is number 173, Resuscito, number 173. Death has passed away. 